Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. She is an incredibly imposing figure. Queen Liliolani. Last of a pure line of Polynesian royalty. Save for the handsome son she faces. Nearly eye level to eye level. Although Danny Makihini is well over six feet. Always a woman of Amazonian proportions, middle age has blown her to gargantuan size and girth. And her anger and emotion is as monumental as the rest of her. Marry a howley? I'd as soon see you dead. Oh, come on, Mother. It's the 20th century, and Hawaii is a state, not a monarchy. The Polynesian and the American Indian are two of a kind. Two civilizations pirated, their lands raped and stolen, their countries plundered, and their people sold into virtual slavery. You should be running for the Senate. I should be making powder and cleaning my gun. For of all the Haolis on this island, the most repressive, imperialist, surrogate king is Carter Bradley. And my son will marry his daughter only over my dead body. Mother, I've never seen you like this. You're always so reasonable. You are betrothed to Taormina. We haven't really seen each other for over seven years. She's more like a little sister to me. I know more than you do, my son. For all your doctor's knowledge, I beg you not to tempt fate. The gods have been angry enough for years, and my inner senses tell me what you plan will bring a great Auai down upon us. I see a raging disaster already set in being that no human being can stop. Our mystery drama, Wave of Terror was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Paul Hecht and Carmen Matthews. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. When she mentioned disaster... Queen Liliolani could not have sensed the extent of the Holocaust, which was to change so many lives. For at the moment she spoke, out of some alluvial fault in the great Alaskan ridge, the earth boiled from its guts like a volcano, throwing up great mountains of lava, displacing trillions of tons of water that formed a great tidal wave traveling unnoticed beneath the surface, rushing southward at a speed of up to 500 miles an hour towards the first land mass in its way, the islands of Hawaii. Two days earlier, Danny Makahini and Liz Bradley had gotten off the plane from the States at Hilo Airport. Danny, tall, not brown... Liz, a blue-eyed, sun-bronzed, typical California girl. God and goddess with a special shine. The shine of love. But despite the message of their eyes and their faith and assurance, their homeland has brought them a cloud of uncertainty. I'll manage somehow, Danny. Dad's tough, but I can usually break him down. Yeah, so is Mother. I wish I felt as sure of her. She has a genius for getting her own way. <laughs> it's a habit of royalty. And we're both children of royalty. Only yours is for real. So is yours. Mine is just tradition, but yours is force majeure. Mother is a queen by birth. Your father wears his crown by owning half of Hawaii. What makes me unhappy is that I can't bring you the kind of world you're used to, which is only one of the strikes against me as far as your father is concerned. Now, don't start that bit again. So you're a Kanaka. I'm a Haole. So what in this day and age? (laughs) Nothing stateside. Here in Hawaii... What's the difference? We're the ones getting married. Supposing they don't give us their blessing... It's up to you and me, isn't it? Oh, honey, of course, except... uh, Maybe I'm still part heathen after all. Without my mother and your father's blessing, I have a... Uh, For all my liberal arts education and medical school, I still can't explain it with anything but a Hawaiian Polynesian word. I have a... A mea mea. That's just plain superstition. No, it's, it's an uneasy feeling. 
But if it has an explanation, it goes away. Big difference. <sighs> Welcome home. Darling, we're borrowing trouble. Let's just go home and face up to our parents, and maybe there won't be anything. I only want to make it as easy for them as it is for us. I love you. And I love you. It's as simple as that. So just kiss me a short goodbye, you big worry ward. <laughs> when did I have to be asked? Mm. What is it? First rift in the loot. Your ex-rival, Dr. Peter Hughes, is heading straight for us. How'd he get through customs? The Bradley name. The key that opens all doors. Funny dad, isn't he? Really? He's probably too busy reigning. What? Isn't that what a king does all day? Oh, uh, Elizabeth. Danny. Aloha, Pete. What's the matter with Dad? Uh, not a thing. Then why isn't he here to meet me? Uh, he got tied up in some business. <laughs> Am I such a bad substitute? Of course not. I had a feeling I was something of a letdown. By the way, Danny, Queen Lilialani and that exquisite intended of yours, Taormina, are waiting for you outside. Oh, I'd uh, better make tracks. Mother doesn't like to be kept waiting. And I'd better get Elizabeth into the helicopter. Mr. Bradley is a little impatient himself. Uh, will I be hearing from you tomorrow, Liz? I hope tonight. I didn't particularly know you knew Danny Macahini. Only since I went to college on the mainland. You seem to have made up for lost time. What does that mean? I'm not blind. I saw that. <laughs> I was going to say farewell kiss, but I don't think that quite characterizes it. However... Pete, I don't want to talk about Danny right now. I want to talk about what you're avoiding. What is it about Dan? You're quite right. It's a subject I wish I could avoid. He's sick. What's the matter? Is it his heart? No, it isn't anything necessarily fatal for a long time, but... But what? Well, I would give anything not to be a doctor, or have been one these past few months, because I have known that that magnificent body was letting him down. It's only a shell now. What do you mean? Don't let him know I told you, but it can't be hidden much longer. Your father has Parkinson's disease. Oh, my God. Does that mean he's going to die? With care. What medication we know has some results. Under normal conditions, no. But there are plenty of symptoms, none of which your father is going to be able to bear. What symptoms? In your father's case, mostly muscular. Trembling of the hands, dropping things unconsciously. A rigidity which will inevitably cut down on his normally superactive lifestyle. A marked decrease in his muscular control. Oh, no. Oh, that can't happen to Dad. What can we do to help? Some drugs. A fortunate remission in the disease sometimes. Most of all, trying to avoid emotional excitement and fatigue. Welcome home. I had to tell you. Especially since... Why stop now? Well, I love you, Elizabeth. I'm too old for you, but just the same... I know you're in love with Danny Macahini. Did you want to tell your father so? I'm trying very hard to be as objective as a doctor ought to be. I don't know what any of our futures are destined to be, but I do know that your father's life, not necessarily death, but his life, is probably in your hands at this moment and from here on in. <laughs> don't like me anymore? I love you, Tao. Oh, As a little sister. I always have, and I always will. But you know meaning of Luau tonight? Yes, Taormina, and I am ashamed. Please. I know you you want to marry a holy girl. I, I can't help myself, little sister. I love her. The queen will never allow you. I need Carter Bradley's consent more than I do my own mother's. And if you do not get it? And to hell with the past. We will buy our own future. And nothing and no one can stop us. Elizabeth! Dad! 
Daddy. Oh, 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 oh. You can't know how good it is to see you. By damn, you're more beautiful than ever. And you look just like your mother. <gasps> Dad, what are you doing? I'm stealing a page from Pete's book, but I think I deserve it because you look so like Beth did when I married her. I'm going to carry you over the threshold back home again. Dad, you shouldn't. Why not? Well, I'm not such a little girl anymore. Oh, nonsense. Light as a feather, which is just what you are. The proudest feather I wear in my cap. Damn, I'm sorry, Elizabeth. Did I spill? No, Dad. I, uh... I came a cropper up a new story, and I've been breaking in. My arm's a bit stiff. Are you all right? Oh, now you're home. <laughs> oh, I have a few bruises here and there, but I can shake them off the moment I see you and Pete happily married. Now you're graduated. Let's make it soon. Oh, now give the girl a chance to catch her breath, CB. Well, if I were you, I wouldn't grab her while you can. Only when Liz wants me. Now don't tell me I said something out of line. Typical of me trying to rush things. And this damn hand is bothering me tonight. We can talk it all out tomorrow. Oh, I can't tell you how good it is to have you home in Wailua again, sweetheart. I've been waiting to get back myself. It's a cold old house without your mother. You are my one hope for Wailua's future and have always a lot of responsibility to put on a daughter's shoulders. But since I have no son left, I know you won't fail me. Ah, so this is where you've been hiding out, young lovers. <laughs> Danny, you should not have stolen Taormina away from the feast. I was the one to need to speak to Danny alone. Uh, thanks, Tal, but I can't speak for myself. There are too many words in the world. Let us just thank the gods for what little we have. We are a dying race, my son, but still a proud one. You and Tao can keep us alive. And I thank Oro and Tane and Ta'ora that the moment is almost here. Almost here. You are a doctor now. Now, the wedding ceremony need wait no longer. I have set it for the full moon, the night after tomorrow. Uh, mother, I... Mother, Tower Mina and I will not be wed. How? Is this your wish? I... No, but I... Don't stammer, girl. Answer me. I will answer you, Mother. I love Tao as a little sister. But I will marry Elizabeth Bradley. The daughter of Carter Bradley, the Howley? Yes, Mother. Never. I'm sorry, I must. We are in love. He won't let you. How can he stop us? Then I will. If I have to call on all the ancient gods... Oh, please, Mother. I no longer believe in magic, alui, or any superstitious curse that could harm me or Liz. No curse or any magic to harm the girl. I have no power for that or second sight. But I tell you this. If you marry this holy girl, if you tie your life to Carter Bradley's daughter, you end my life. My death will be on your head and hers. I can smell it in the wind. If you insist, in the words of the missionary, you will reap the whirlwind. Queen Liliolani could have had no specific foreknowledge of the Holocaust in store. Carter Bradley, absolute monarch whose magnificent physique is betraying him and whose weakness will lead him back to old sins. None of our characters can yet know the cataclysm of nature which is to affect their lives. I shall return shortly with Act Two. The great shelf of sub-ocean land that lies off the Aleutian chain of islands is still intact. It is some 48 hours still before the titanic undersea explosion will rend it asunder and create a wave that will rise towering to 90 feet, 20 to 30 feet above the great mansion at Wailua, which spreads along the coral cliffs looking northward to the vast Pacific and the coming terror. 
On the lanai, facing away from the ocean, Carter is just finishing breakfast as Liz joins him. Well, now it seems more like home again. Morning, Elizabeth, dear. Morning, Dad. You know, I've been sitting here snorting as impatient as the old war horse I am. But I couldn't wait. I've finished breakfast. I'll ring for yours. No, no, Dad, please. What's the matter, Princess? You don't feel well? I wish you wouldn't call me that. What? Princess. Well, it's my old name for you, and I always called you. You, you don't feel well. I'm tired, Dad. Long trip, change in time. Well, you should have slept longer. How about some coffee? No, no thanks. Juice? Nothing for the moment. We... We have things to talk about. Well, of course we have, but I sort of thought we'd keep that for lunch, huh? And Pete will be here, and don't you think he ought to be part of it? No, Dad, I don't. Oh, I don't think that's so fair, Princess. It's at all... All right, if you prefer it, Lisbeth. Now, why I can't use the old name? It doesn't I... fit me, Dad. It's not what I am. <laughs> On these islands, and particularly this one, it's what you are, at the very least. If we were to ride to Mauna Kea, way up to the top, you could turn and look north, east, west, and south, and every bit of land you saw would be yours. Or will be someday. Are you so sure, Dad? I own it. It's mine. Along with a few other things. When I'm gone, whose else would it be except yours? And uh, Pete's? I don't really know. I'm not sure it's that important to me. What would happen if I didn't marry Pete? Didn't? What are you talking about? Would the Bradley Ranch still be mine? And all that goes with it if I didn't? I, I didn't. Who, who, who else would you marry? I didn't expect you up so early, my son. After the long trip and the luau. Well, it was a perfect morning for surfing. When the sun rose, I saw those easy rolling four-footers, and I grabbed my board and took off. <laughs> Happy to be home again, in your own land. Yes, in a sense... Cutting across those waves out there gave me back not only my sense of balance, but uh, just my own plain good sense. I'm happy to hear that. Then today, we don't quarrel. <laughs> That's up to you. My doubts are all gone. I would hope that you tell me you are talking about Taormina. Yes, in part. Yes, you will marry her. Mother, listen to me. I know your pride in race, in bloodline, your, your struggle to make sure that it won't die. But when I left Hawaii to go to UCLA, I was 18. I was 10, 11 years old. We made the promises, we took the vows, but Tao was too young to know what was involved. I believed then, as you do still, that our heritage and our race must be preserved. But I don't any longer. You are a Polynesian prince. No, I am a citizen of the world, Mother. A doctor. Race, creed, color, nationalism. Nothing matters to me but that the human body is one and the same thing. The body made strong or weak by exercise and usage. The brain the same by education or lack of it. So you will not marry Taormina? No. You think Carter Bradley will share your views, accept you as his son-in-law? I don't know. I'll find that out today. But if he doesn't? We are both of age, Mother. He can't stop us. I wouldn't be too sure of that. And what about me? I want you to meet Liz, Mother. I think you'll change your mind. I will meet her. But I shall not change my mind. And what will you do then? Meet her first before we come to that decision. When? Look, I'll take the jeep into town and call her. Then I'll drive to Waialua, get her, and bring her back. You're wasting your time. I hope not. Because I love you. And I want you to love her, too. I'll be back by mid-afternoon. Great Tani, help me. Help me make my son see that our race, shamed and despoiled and dying out, must have new life bred into it. Only Makahini and Taormina can do it. She is a princess in her own right. Help me, Tane. Help me. Or 
the smell of doom that comes to me on the wind from the north will come to pass. Hey, old boy. Stable King here and rub him down good. I rode him hard this morning. Ah, hey, Pete. Morning, CB. I'm hungry as a bull. Is lunch ready? <laughs> yes. There's a nice breeze off the water, so Chung Lee set the two of us up on the front lanai. Two of us? Uh, is Elizabeth still sick? Oh, come, let's go through the house. I have to wash up anyway. Where is she? Upstairs? No, she, uh... She left quite a bit before I got here. What do you mean, sick? Oh, she was feeling a little off her feet at breakfast. Left to go where? Old Danny Makahini came by and picked her up. Liz said she'd be back in the late afternoon. Danny Makahini? Queen Liliolani, son? Yes. Oh, I thought he was at medical school on the mainland. He was. He's graduated. He came back on the same plane with Liz yesterday. Didn't even know she knew him. But I, uh, I don't like this about Elizabeth. Is it serious? In its own way. I was going to let her tell you herself, but... Maybe as your doctor, it's better if I do it instead. Well, come on, man. Come on, come on. Get it out. What is it? Well, let's sit down for a minute. I want to remind you of your condition and that flying off the handle and losing your temper is the worst thing you can do. Oh, you pill peddlers. You're all prophets of doom. Well, if you take the pills I provide, you might put yours off a good deal all longer. Right, now, sit down. All right, but don't try to change the subject. I want to know why Elizabeth went chasing off with Makahini. Did they go surfing? Not exactly. Damn my eyebrows, you're a calm enough lover, Pete. Your fiancé goes herring off with another man her first day back home, even if he is just a Canica Beach boy, and you just let her go. First, she left before I got here. Second, he is not a Canica Beach boy. He's a colleague of mine, a doctor of medicine. And lastly, Elizabeth is not my fiancé anymore. What? How do you know? Where did you find that out? Yesterday, when I brought her home. You you turned my daughter down? No. I should have, really, in the first place. I'm far too old for her. Oh, rubbish. Well, I'm not marrying her, C.B. And you're not fooling me one bit, Pete. You're still as much in love with Elizabeth as you have always been. I smell a rat, and I'll bet it's Makahini. Is that it? Is that it? Where did they go? To see the queen. I imagine to ask her blessing. To get married? My daughter and a... Peach boy! Now, stop talking about Danny like that. And don't get all worked up. It's bad for you. Oh, I won't get worked up. First of all, because it's just not going to happen. There'll be no marriage between them. Because if she doesn't stop it, I will. By God, if he has much as cares. Is this all right, C.B.? Now, now, just take it easy. It's, it's only a temporary attack, C.B. But this time you are going to take one of my pills. I'm sorry, my dear. You're a lovely girl. And I can hardly blame Danny, but marriage between you is quite impossible. Mother, I... I haven't finished. There are reasons beyond reasons why it can never be. Your blood is not our blood. Danny is already betrothed to Princess Tower Mina. The gods are already angered and cannot be angered anymore. For God's sakes, Mother, it's the 20th century. And you are as intelligent and well-read and educated as any woman I know. Stop acting like some old ignorant witch. I am acting as I must, because within me are ancient chords which sing of death and certain doom for two people. Queen Liliolani, I respect your point of view. Do you respect your father's? Yes, but I will give you the same answer as I would give him. I love Danny. I'm over 20. Danny is 25. There is no way either of you can stop us. I'd rather it wouldn't be like that. But Danny and I have agreed. She's quite right, Mother. We'd give anything to have both you and Mr. Bradley with us, but if you're not... I cannot give my consent. I can only warn you, if you persist, it will end in death and disaster. I have nothing more to say. I am going to pray for all of us. <laughs> We're almost all the way home, and we still haven't decided just how we're going to go about it. I know, Danny. It's just... I don't think we can rush it. 
Not right now, because of Dad. If you want to back out, I'm not holding you to anything. Oh, darling. Darling, don't do that. Honey, I hate to get long-winded or go chucking my medical knowledge around, but Parkinson's. I mean, it can and almost always is a long, long process. He's going to need me. I mean, really need me for the first time in his life. It's a life that could last another 20 years. Are you asking me to wait that long? No. No. Because there are other... Oh, Danny, I'm so tired. And I just can't think. And we're home. Give me till tomorrow, at least. Sure, sure. Of course, darling. It's only, well... I'm under some pressures of my own. And if I can't have you... Well, I won't break my mother's heart or Tao's, and tomorrow night is their night. I'll talk to Dad tonight. If I can't convince him, we'll be on our own. Well, why not let me do it? I'm the one <laughs> seeking your hand, if not your fortune. I mean, it's up to me. All right, if you... What is it? Pete. He looks as if... Hello, Danny. Elizabeth. Oh. Where's Dad? Inside. But Danny, Liz... If either of you want to talk to him about... about you... As a doctor, I'd say now isn't the time. What happened? I made a judgment. I thought maybe I'd better tell him about you, too. Did Liz tell you about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does anything serious happen? No, Danny. MD to MD, you know how it can go. Yeah. He got a bit emotional and suffered some speech impairment. Uh -huh. He's all right now, but I wouldn't advise any further. Yeah, yeah, quite right. I'd better duck out fast before he sees me. I'll be in touch tomorrow morning, Liz. Keep your chin up, eh? No real worries about your dad. Right, Doctor? Right. Just us. This, too, shall pass. <laughs> I love you. Till tomorrow. Me, too. And forever. That, too. <laughs> Aloha. You sure Dad's all right? If we can keep off a certain subject, sure. I don't want... I can't do any more talking about... <sighs> Oh, P, help me quick. What is it? Just something that nobody but me knows about. Yes. I wonder if anyone else will. Ever. What new factor could enter a hoped-for marriage which already appears to have everything against it? And what is the meaning of Liz's cryptic statement, expressing a knowledge that only she has and no one else may ever know? Is it the same knowledge that Queen Liliwonani talks of as buried in the past? And if she too knows that ancient gods are to extract penance for buried sins, who are the two that are doomed? Or are more to die in the dreadful natural phenomenon that is at last about to be unleashed 3,000 miles away? I'll return shortly with Act Three. At exactly 8.42 the following morning on the island of Hawaii, Two final ultimatums were issued by two irate parents. One of them by Queen Lily Orlani to her son. The gods have been angry enough for years. My inner voices tell me what you plan will bring a great our way upon us. I see a raging disaster will be set in being that no human being can stop. And Carter Bradley to his daughter the next morning completely recovered through rest and medication for the moment. Let's get one thing straight, Princess, and don't interrupt me. I use the old name deliberately. On this island, you, we, are the royalty. And I'm warning you one thing right now. Go near that Makahini Kanaka again, or let him come near you and I'll shut him down like a dog. I mean that, Princess, as God is my witness. No one or nothing can stop me from doing as I want on this island. Whether it was sheer coincidence or whether gods, ancient or contemporary, took offense, 
This was the moment the titanic explosion occurred, hurling trillions upon trillions of tons of water at breakneck speed above the ocean bed. Within six hours, it would hit the north shore of the island of Hawaii head on. Whether guided by sheer accident or supernatural design, the devastation it would leave in its wake would be, to say the least, supernatural. Dad, you can't be serious. Oh, but I am. You couldn't do this to I'm me. I'm doing it for you. But I love Danny. Childish romance. If you don't marry Pete, I'll leave everything to him. I don't need anything. Daddy can support me. I can work. You'll never marry him. Why are you so set against him? It should be obvious enough. Nobody could be that prejudiced. That bigoted. To make sure if he comes near here or you again, I will shoot him on sight. Dr. Hughes? Pete, it's Dad. He's had some sort of attack or something. I... All right, Liz, just slow down. Now tell me what happened. And don't worry, there's no danger. I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to be incoherent, but it was just awful to see him and listen to him just spluttering and talking all sorts of nonsense. I gave him some medication. Did he take it? Yes, he's gone upstairs to take it. What is it, Pete? It's part of his illness. The speech impairment is one of the symptoms. Excitement aggravates them. I'll be right out. And let's see if we can figure what to do. I've given him a sedative that'll keep him quiet for a couple of hours. Problem one out of the way, temporarily. Now for problem two. You. There isn't any problem about me. I've got to tell Danny we're through. I can't marry Danny. And what about the child? You know? Yes. But how? I mean, I'm not even sure myself. When I gave you the sedative yesterday, I took some blood. There's no doubt about it, Liz. You're pregnant. Oh, Lord. Now what am I going to do? You're going to get in the car with me and drive to Tupapahu. If anything can change Queen Liliolani's mind, it's the child. So you are already carrying Danny's child, and you think that will alter things? I'm the one who hoped it would. I won't give up Danny's baby. That's one part of it no one can take from me. You have courage, little Laoli. More courage than I had. I wouldn't say that. You know what a difference there is. Danny would want his child. Call him. Get him here and ask him. I can't. Why not? He left an hour ago for Wailua. I'm surprised you didn't pass him. He must have taken the jeep over the back road. That's too rough for a car. For Wailua? Pete, we've got to stop him somehow. Catch up with him. It's too late for that. But if he's gone to Wailua, if father sees him, he'll kill him. What is all this? My father, Queen Liliolani. He's promised to shoot Danny on sight. Oh, please, please, can't you help us somehow? Why should I? It could be your son's life. And now... I am made responsible again for another life, another son. (laughs) How history repeats itself. But it won't again. It's past time for retribution, and the gods are coming to claim it. What do you mean? The Mehameha is upon us. I can feel the ripples of it in my soul, the lift of it like a wave. I will call Brad. Brad? Your father. Once, he meant everything to me that Danny means to you. At the moment the Queen lifted the phone, a tanker plowing across the North Pacific lifted ever so slightly on a five-inch surface swell. That was the only sign of the gargantuan tsunami the dreadful tidal wave which swept by at the speed of sound, hurtling toward the north shore of Hawaii. There, its monstrous energy would pile up the waters to a height of over 80 feet, driving inland till its force was spent, to be sucked back with such diabolic speed that it would carry away everything in its path. Yes? 
Brad. It's Lil. Lil. For Pete's sake. Why, how many years? Twelve, thirteen. You sound just the same. Uh, I don't look it. How are you, Brad? Oh, I don't know, Lil. I'm not the man I once was. Uh, you'll never change. Certainly not for me. I, uh... I want to ask you one favor. How oh, little I... If it's about our children, Brad, I... have I ever asked one from you before? No, Lord knows you haven't. It's a matter of life or death. Will you meet me at the grotto? If you ask me, how can I refuse? If we both leave this minute, we should arrive in about an hour and a half. All right, there. If you shut your eyes to what I have become, at least it's dark. I'll see you at the grotto. After your mother died, Elizabeth, we were lovers, your father and I. I carried a child of his in my womb. But we were ridden with pride of race, each for his own, and it drove us apart. We could never be married. And the child... Well, I thought it was not meant for me to bear a child of mixed race. I said goodbye to your father. And there, in that grotto, in our temple of love, I aborted and destroyed our child. I offended the gods. Listen to me, little Aoli princess. You will have your father's blessing as you have mine. Remember that. Love my boy. Take care of him. Bear his child. Then Ta Aurora will be with us again. Say goodbye to Danny for me. I cannot urge any longer, Brad. I thought if I at last was willing to accept commingled blood in a child of our families. I can't help myself, Lil. I am as I am. I cannot accept any child of my daughter's with mixed blood. And so you want to kill my boy? What if he stays away from Elizabeth? And the child. Well, that can be taken care of. You will stop the children. Make history repeat a terrible mistake. Us, all over again. Lil, I cannot change. You are changed already. Look at your hands. Shaking now like leaves in the wind. Uh, that's a different matter. I have Parkinson's disease. I told you you'd find a different man. Not the difference I would have wanted. Wait a minute. Shh, quiet. Come out, Salville, oh, quick. What, what is it, Brad? Parkinson's. My God, look at it. It's a half a mile below normal. The fish left gasping on the rocks. A tidal boar is on the way, and a big one. I know. Ta Aurora has been telling me all morning I could smell the anger of the gods. It's why I called you here. To die? Dead. We cannot stay in the children's way. Well, there's still king. Of course we both might... This gross old woman. Even at your best, you couldn't hoist me on his back. Even with you alone on his back, it's too late. But I have no right. No, try, Brad. Try, if you can. Home, King! Home! Run like a wind, boy! You're staying. <laughs> We've both been legends in our time, Lou. We wouldn't want to outlive our glory. I shouldn't have done this to you. No. I'm burned out, Lou. Thanks for making me realize that I hadn't much further to go. I only wish I'd been able to tell Princess. I mean... Elizabeth, but at the last she had my blessing and my love. She knows she has oh, both. My love, yes, but the other, how could she ever know? I told her so before I left her. How could you? Because I knew what I was going to do. And I know you, Brad. Oh, I know you. If ever any woman knew a man. Oh, Lil, what a fool I was. We both were. <laughs> But how good to have you back at last. Tsunami, it's coming at last. Are you afraid, Lou? No, I'm going home, back to 
to where my roots are, in the sea, to the south, Paro Road, the sea god will guide me safely. And you, Frank. I go with you as I should have all those years ago. But you, you're shaking. That's what the wave will freely from. The shame of being less than a man. It's all right, do. It's as it should be. We couldn't have each other in life. We'll stand together forever in death. The inexorable incoming march of the water did little damage compared to the outgoing surge, which sucked everything into and away with it, like some colossal, unimaginable vacuum cleaner. It left the beach and the inlet stripped clean, and swept Wailua away like so many matchsticks. As far as the eye could see across that northern shore of Hawaii where the wave struck, and as far as the wave penetrated, not a living thing was left. I'll be back shortly. Danny and Liz were married very quietly. There was no formal funeral either for Queen Liliolani or Carter Bradley. Only a memorial service. Two dynasties were finished, ended, and melded in the two young people who never took their loving eyes from each other during the simple wedding service. The close was an exchange between bride and groom in Hawaiian. Aloha. Aloha means hello. Aloha means goodbye, but most of all, it means I love you. For this, after all the terror and holocaust, turns out to be just that, a love story. Our cast included Paul Hecht, Carmen Matthews, Suzanne Grossman, Gordon Gould, Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. I'll always remember how she looked. She was almost pretty when she had that shy smile on her face. But would it be murder? If all I did was help her to kill herself? She had this insane affinity for a lethally poisonous snake. Sooner or later, she would release him from his cage in the mad delusion that he was her dear friend. Would it be murder? No. It is murder? Look at him. This enormous monster coiled in his cage, sleeping. No one had seen me enter this house of crawling, murderous creatures. Here on the side is the latch. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Sinoff, the sinus medicines. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Pleasant dreams.